Welcome back, whiskey fans. This is the last of the March Malternative series for 2023, and I really saved the oddball of the group, the weird one out of the four, for last. This is, it's a white rum, but it's not a white rum, it's Clarin. So Clarin is, it's essentially a white rum made in Haiti, and Clarin is a very special rum because it's something that until very recently has been completely unheard of outside of the small communities where it's made because this stuff is made in very small scale on farms and in local communities in Haiti. Clarin is a white Haitian rum which is often spontaneously fermented using natural yeasts so this is definitely some proper terroir and provenance going on and using natural yeasts it's obviously relying on a lot of expertise and tradition and a little bit of luck as well, I imagine. So Haiti is a Caribbean country that you may have heard of in the news recently because they're undergoing a terrible humanitarian crisis at the moment. Haiti is a country that has, they've seen more than their fair share of tragedy over recent decades and I really hope that that changes soon. As for this, Claren white rum from Haiti though. This is a blend of rums from four producers in Haiti and it's a little bit of an oddball and I must admit that I bought all of these rums together and I cheaped out on this one a little bit because it is kind of the black sheep of the of the order. It's kind of the one that I had least confidence in because it's a Claren, which is this weird subcategory of rums, and I decided that I'd spent quite a lot of money already on these three, and I decided to go for something a little bit more economical here. Most Claren that you can buy tends to be very high strength. If you do a Google search now, then you'll find a lot of stuff which is cask strength. You're talking about 50-something percent, 60-something percent, really strong stuff. This is a lot cheaper than those options because it's only bottled at 43%. And it's also a blend of rums from four different producers in Haiti. It's very important that you don't underestimate this stuff though. Claren Communal is a wonderful Haitian rum. The 43% is absolutely enough. It should not be underestimated. And it's a very good value, cheap introduction into Haitian rum. I bought this bottle for about £35, which I think is incredible because I really like this stuff. Like a lot of other rums, it comes with a synthetic cork. And I did also notice, I'm going to show you the label again, I don't know if I gave you a proper close-up, but I love the presentation on this. It's simple, it has all that local character. I don't actually know what these kind of sun faces are. If anyone in the comments know, knows what they are, let me know, because they seem very familiar to me. I'm sure I've seen them somewhere else before, but I can't quite put my finger on it. You'll probably have noticed by now that the label is in French. I'll show you the back label. You can pause that and have a read if you want to. But I did notice that there's a sticker on here next to the UK duty paid label. Let's put the cork in, because that's going to be hilarious if I tip it everywhere just before I review it, isn't it? But this label down here, Speciality Brands, which is, the address is Elixir House. So it seems like this stuff is actually imported into the UK by Speciality Brands, which I believe is Whiskey Exchange, but this is not a Whiskey Exchange product. So yeah, Haitian White Rum, Claren, 43%, wonderful stuff. Let's do some tasting. Like with the Ray and Nephew, there's really not a lot to see there. It's possibly a little bit more clear than the Ray and Nephew, but that's probably because it's lower strength. But really, white rum at 43%, unaged, uncoloured, wonderful. I love the smell of this stuff. Getting slightly ahead of myself here, but the nose on this Claren from Haiti, it's obviously a lot weaker 
in terms of ABV than the Rare Nephew at 63%. But this stuff, it actually has more character and more funk and more eccentricities in it than the even than the Rare Nephew does. This is really characterful, oddball, fun stuff. On the nose, really strong note of overripe bananas and cream. It hasn't got as much of that burnt sugar note that you get in the Rare Nephew. It's a much more delicate and fruity experience. A little bit of a note of rotten peach on the nose. Pineapple, really strong note of creamy, sweet, sugary mango. Raisin soaked in rum. But after that, it really gets a little bit weird. On the nose, I'm getting a strong note of like a rubbery bicycle tyre, like new bike tyres, like walking around in Halfords. Anyone that's from the UK, you'll know what I mean. Bit of a note of shoe polish on the nose and a fermenting sugary note that me myself being from Norfolk I would equate to standing near a pile of rotting sugar beet. We grow a lot of sugar beet here in Norfolk and if you ever stood next to a pile of sugar beet that's been pulled up from the ground and left piled up for a long time and it started to all the sugars have started to break down and ferment a little bit that smell is really what I'm getting on the nose of this very very fruity very pungent it's actually so strong on those ripe fruit notes that it's nearly sickly but it's not it's absolutely lovely honest let's see how it tastes just looks like a glass of water <laughs> on the palate baked banana and black pepper it's also a little bit of minerality to the palate of this rum and I'm not going to go as far as saying that it's a greasy greasy oiliness but it's definitely a slight vegetable oil olive oil quality on the palate as well as a slight saltiness and again I think it was on the rare nephew I said that there was a slight vanilla pod quality and again I'm getting a proper vanilla pod musty vanilla quality in this rum as well as some more plasticky acrid kind of new audio cassette smell if you've ever if you're old enough to have ever had a brand new audio cassette when you first take it out of the plastic that smell that you get from a new audio cassette if you've never experienced that if you if you are cursed with youth then the note that I'm describing is basically a sweet, acrid plasticiness. I'd say that this rum, and it's entirely my fault for going for something that's bottled at 43%, I don't think that it tastes quite as amazing or as complex or as bold or as interesting as it smells, but it's pretty close. And I think that despite being just 43%, this stuff is really, really good, and it's actually possibly the most characterful and most oddball and as and one of the most drinkable out of the, the four that we've got in the lineup this month. It's just absolutely jam-packed full of fruity, funky character and controversial opinion, but I'd say that this Claren from Haiti is actually as funky and estuary as the eight-year-old Hamden. It's gonna have one more sip and look at the finish. I really do enjoy this Claren. I think that it really combines a lot of the best points of the previous three. And if you can still get this stuff for £35, incredibly highly recommended. On the finish, getting some notes of black bananas, so overripe, mushy banana, rum and raisin ice cream, and all of those amazing, fruity, acrid, plasticky, sugary fermenting aromas coming from the nose so what's the final verdict on this claren communal i think it's absolutely fantastic and it's amazing value for money i think that it has it has a lot of different flavors and it has complexity in that way the way that i've said before that rum to me you tend to get one flavor after the other it develops 
and it kind of guides you through the experience. And I think that the way that you get one flavour at a time, it's kind of simple in a way, but still interesting. It's it's a kind of purity of flavour, but it's still got a wonderful intensity of flavour, despite that relatively low 43% ABV. Like I said, I do think that this stuff smells slightly better than it tastes, but it's still really, really great. More than anything, I just have this feeling that if you could get this or one of the components from this at full cask strength, it would just be absolutely amazing. Like I said before with the Dorleys, it's not that it's underpowered. You just have this feeling that it has so much more to give if you get a properly presented version of it. So yeah, Claren, Haitian rum, really, really great stuff. Really, very highly recommended. And re this one in particular is a really amazing introduction to Haitian rum. So what have we learned there? What do I recommend? I think I recommend all of them. <laughs> if you are, if you have an interest in rum or getting into rum, I think you could do a lot worse than buying a bottle of all four of these. And if I had to pick one that was better than the rest, I really don't think I could. I think that out of all of these, you've obviously got that funkiness, really eccentric funk that will appeal to anyone that likes Isla whiskies or Mezcal or Campbelltown Funk, anything like that, you will probably love anything from Hamden. If you're after something really intense and ballsy, especially considering that you can get it in supermarkets, then you can't really go wrong with the Rare Nephew, 63%. There's so much flavour there for £25 to £28. The Dorleys is just such an amazing easy drinking, pleasurable experience. And the Claren, I think the Claren really combines the eccentricities of the Hamden and the easy drinking of the Dorleys. They're all amazing. So yeah, let me know what you think of these. If you've had any, or if you're thinking of trying any, what have you been tempted by? Next week, I suppose, we'll be back to whiskey. Seems a little bit boring now, doesn't it? I wonder if anyone's registered a YouTube channel as Rumlock yet. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week. Cheers.